a few minutes before we start. And it's a new phase in our course about universal abundance. And we are going to tap into love in the second phase, right? So before we start, why don't you tell me, since we're here together, before you see all that is up and going on here, what is your concept of abundance now? Why don't you type without thinking too much, your instinctual in the present moment concept of abundance. Let's see what you have to say before we start tonight. How would you define abundance in the present moment with the idea that you have now fresh before this session? Take a deep breath. I'm not sure if you're shy. Okay, great. You got it. Happy feelings in all parts of life. Beautiful. Yeah. Because you can't just have one slice of the pie, right? So all areas. We're going to talk about this. Some people are not fulfilled in one or two areas of life, so they don't feel completely abundant. We're going to organize this in our psyches and see how that, how that works. So I want you to start thinking right now before we start, because every Course in Human Nature session is like a monthly Cardinal Method session, right? We have the knowledge part, in this live session. Then we have this knowledge of self part with the know thyself exercises. And the third, so it's two thirds with knowledge and knowledge of self. And the third third is knowing, knowing the content, knowing the theory, knowing yourself when you take inspired action and that self transformation. So every month we have a chance to tap into knowledge, knowledge of self, if we do the Know Thyself exercises, and self-transformation if we take inspired action based on the two-thirds before. So it literally is a self-transformation session throughout the month that happens. And I want you to think of the areas of life that can improve the physical body, the home, the the financial life, the professional life, the emotional life, the spiritual life. Because when we do our inner work, we do get results. You can be sure of that, and we're going to talk about that. So we are going to create more abundance starting today because we're now tapping into love. And wisdom is more of a cognitive thing. And love is an emotional realm. And it's different. It's a very different vibration. And we're going to create more expansion in the course as well, which I'll talk about when we finish the content. Okay? So we are going to reach 7 p.m. And I'm going to start with, uh, with sharing the screen. Okay, so it's 7. Thank you for answering that. Let's get to it. So this is A Course in Human Nature, Part 2. We're diving into love, mature love, love that has the structure of wisdom with the 11, I mean, the 12 sessions that we had before in the first phase of the course, about, which was about wisdom. Now we're starting a phase about love. So it's an ascending spiral in which we Sometimes we go back to the same places with a more panoramic view of that and able to dive deeper as well. So it's higher perspectives and deeper understanding. And today we're going to talk about abundance and creating your life from a spiritual perspective. What does that mean? First of all, what is abundance? What is the definition of abundance? There are levels of abundance and they're intertwined. So the first thing that's important to understand 
is that we need abundance in different levels and different levels are two ends of the same spectrum, so to speak. So the physical and spiritual levels are the same. The physical body and the health of the body reflect the state of the spirit. Matter and physicality are spirit and dance manifestation. So there is no duality between what's physical and what's spiritual. Meaning abundance is spiritual. We tend to think of abundance sometimes as a lot of people tend to think of abundance as wealth or just, you know, uh, material riches. But abundance is way beyond that. But when it comes to the manifestation of physical abundance and health and wealth and riches, that means that the person who manifests those things in his or her life has a spiritual connection, has a pure mind. That person's mind is not clogged with debris and residue and blockages and stone walls and brick walls and medieval walls, okay? So the first level, the first levels of abundance that we need to focus on are the physical and spiritual, and they are mirror images of each other, meaning that the physical level is just a dense manifestation of spirit. Now, a materialistic mind is not going to accept that, so we can't even argue with a materialistic person. But once you understand and accept the fact that matter is infused with spirit, then we're talking in the perspective of this course. So there are two other levels which are mental and spiritual and mental and emotional. So in Eastern traditions, we are actually, um, the mental and emotional are the same thing because your thoughts create your emotions. Your emotions are creations of your thoughts. So when we talk about the mental level here, it's because the quality of your thoughts are going to create your emotions. Your emotions are unfoldings of your thoughts. So the mental level is also a mirror image of the spiritual level, and the mental creates the emotional. And there's also the environmental and financial levels, meaning the quality of your finances usually can create the quality of the environments that you're in, the home you, where you live in, your work environment, the places to where you travel, and the quality of the the quality of everything physical regarding environment. So in order to create abundance in your life, it's important to be connected in a pleasant way to the environments where that you're living, where you work, where you go to. And we are now starting to tap into love. What does love have to do with any of this abundance uh, focus because the more you love yourself the more you want to be in pleasant environments not just physical environments but also social environments you don't want to be around toxic people and you don't want to be around in places that don't make you feel good when you open your eyes you want to contemplate beauty you want to contemplate good things does it mean that you need to leave that you need to live in a mansion that you need to live in a like an island in the Pacific. No, people have different needs regarding environments, but the cleaner and more pleasant the environments that you go to are, the more abundant you will be. And that has to do with your financial stability and your financial health. So now we're going to talk about the chakras and you can go back to our part one in the course that I think it's section, it's a session three that we talk about the chakras in detail, but we need to talk about the chakras when we talk about universal abundance and the fact that abundance is spiritual because the chakras are energy levels in the body. They're consciousness centers, meaning we create our lives with our consciousness. We create our lives with our thoughts and the chakras are consciousness centers with corresponding areas of life. So your root chakra re regards your survival. It has to do with 
as, as, as I said, environment where you live, if you're sheltered, if you're clothed, and if you have food to eat and money in the bank for any emergency. So that's a root chakra balance, right? It corresponds to that area. And in the body, as I said, everything is intertwined and connected. And the, the, the root chakra is responsible for an area of life. And it also governs areas in the body. So it governs the urinary system. It governs the hips and the legs and, you know, the areas of the body where it is located. And then when we travel up, we are going up a ladder of abundance. So survival allows us to have pleasure in life. Okay, so you need guaranteed survival in order to enjoy life. That's the sacral chakra. That's the orange, the orange image that you see here and near the belly button of the person, and it governs life in that, in the sense of pleasure, in the sense of enjoyment. So a lot of people, you can't really enjoy life if your survival is at stake, okay? So if you're in debt, if you have financial issues, if you have survival issues, if you have health issues in the physical body, which is generally governed by the crown chakra and the root chakra, we're going to talk about that soon. But if you, have, if you have structure problems and survival problems, you can't enjoy life. There is no pleasure, right? So pleasure requires survival, a guaranteed survival and stability and survival. Once you are in pleasure, you enjoy life. You're able to travel up in consciousness and abundance when you develop a social life that allows you to be connected to people in a professional way. It is the center of confidence in the body, a center of individuality and personal power, which is the solar plexus. And it is where you have professional success and abundance keeps growing exponentially. I like to think of this as 10 times more. Okay. So the, the sacral chakra allows 10 times more abundance than the root chakra and the solar plexus 10 times more abundance than the sacral chakra. And then as you travel up in the chakras as abundance centers, you have the heart chakra, the green um, image that you see where the heart is. And that is an unfolding that allows you to have healthy relationships. It's the center of love in the body, expanding in abundance, bringing healthy relationships and beautiful people to your life, romantic relationships and friendships, and also connection to all life, to all beings, to animals, to plants. It is an expansion of love and connection. As you travel up in the chakras and the abundance of life, you have the throat chakra, which is the center of truth, the center of individuality and authenticity in the body and also in life. So once you have healthy relationships, you are able to become who you were born to become and express that. So it's a center of, self, of self-expression. It's a center of creativity. It's a center of uh, uh, self-realization starting in the, in the throat chakra. It's a divine chakra. It, it's a sense of be, being beyond the world, you know, uh, transcending the material world. And it is governed by truth. So the more you express yourself authentically, it's a center of authenticity, the more abundance you have. So up until now, what blocks these centers of, of abundance? Fear blocks the root chakra. And guilt blocks the sacral chakra. Okay, so we don't, when we don't allow ourselves to receive abundance, it's because we're in fear or we're in guilt or we are in shame, which blocks the solar plexus, or we are in sadness, which blocks the, the, the heart chakra. And especially when we lie to ourselves, which is what blocks the blue chakra here on the throat, which is what blocks the throat chakra. So it's the center of truth in the body. And when we lie, we are blocking that center and we are blocking our abundance. 
as we travel up, and this is major now when it comes to abundance, the thought patterns, we see the third eye chakra here, this indigo image, and it is a major center of abundance because the more you think healthy thoughts, the more you create them. So the quality of your thoughts can block or allow abundance. And these six chakras are very human and very individual, but the great center of abundance where abundance resides in our lives is the crown chakra in the top of your head. That is the center of universal abundance and it requires surrender. So as I talked about the levels of a consciousness up until the third eye chakra it is up to us it's our individual selves it's us doing our jobs okay it's us doing what we were born to do in the world and allowing abundance and it's our personal effort F after you've done all you all you can do and you allow yourself to have beautiful thoughts and and thoughts of perfection instead of toxic thoughts and criticisms and all that, all you have to do is surrender and allow abundance in. So the big question is, why do so many people struggle with abundance and do not live in the abundance that they are born and have the birthright to enjoy in life? The answer to that is that there are blockages. And the reason why there are blockages is that their chakras are blocked. Maybe all of them, maybe some of them. And we're going to dive deep into that. So it's important that you know that the spiritual reality is the physical reality. And the center of abundance in our bodies, of universal abundance, is the crown chakra. It is the life connection, the source of all abundance. The, it's the portal to limitless abundance in life. It's the crown chakra. However, if the prior chakras below it are blocked, abundance cannot flow in from the crown chakra to the other chakras, meaning to the areas of life that these chakras govern. So I want you to take a deep breath now and think, ask yourself, which areas of my life are blocked? And that means that these chakras are blocked for some reason. And we're going to get into that and dive into that. So there is a duality that blocks abundance because abundance is all about integration. So we are in integration when we are trusting. Trusting life is an attribute of the crown chakra and it allows movement. So when you trust, meaning You've done all you can. You've done everything in your power to align your, your chakras and areas of life. And all you have to do now is surrender and trust. You create movement as opposed to suspicion, which is the opposite of trust. So you don't allow the crown chakra to bring in the abundance of life when you're suspicious, when you're suspicious. I apologize. When you're suspicious, you create stagnation. You block abundance immediately. I'm not saying you should be naive. And we're going to talk about how abundance, universal abundance is so connected to awareness. But there's a difference between being suspicious and being aware of the truth and being in fear and all that. Okay. So we block the crown chakra connection when we are suspicious, we create stagnation and then abundance doesn't manifest. Also, surrendering. Surrendering after you've done all in your, everything in your power, you surrender and you trust that life is going to bring the results. People get impatient and they sometimes think that it's not happening, it's not happening. It's because there's a lot of blockages to dissolve, okay? So if it's not yet manifested, keep doing your work and declogging and uncluttering and for sure your life is going to improve. But the surrendering aspect means that 
you know that there are things beyond what you can do as an individual. So universal abundance comes to those who trust and surrender, not to those who control. Because just like mistrust, just like suspicion, control creates stagnation and blocks the flow of universal abundance in your life. Allowing creates movement. So we talk about this in this course, right? Remember session 12, the last session, we talk a lot about allowing. And also in session 11, too, in the first part of the course, um, allowing creates movement. When you allow abundance, some people ask for abundance and they don't allow it. When abundance comes, they shut down because it's the unknown and we are wired as humans. So many people talk about this in the personal development industry that the reptilian brain is programmed, you know, thousands of years ago, we are programmed to run away from unknown things because they mean danger, right? When we lived in the forest and we had to run away from lions so that they say there are biological wiring is still in that fear mode. So anything that is a change in what we know, even if we know scarcity and what we know is sad and what we know is not what we want, when abundance comes in, we shut it out because we don't allow it because we are biologically wired. And that's not the only reason, but part of it is that we're biologically wired to run away from anything new because it represents the unknown meaning we interpret the unknown as something fearful. And we're going to change that to, in this session because we're going to talk about how we can allow abundance in. So allowing is movement and it is the opposite of resistance. So when we resist, we create stagnation and resistance is the major block to universal abundance. And then we have to understand what are the reasons of resistance. Why do we resist? So the emotional blockages in the chakras will suspend universal abundance, will not allow us to live in universal abundance in our human experience. So the first one is fear in the root chakra in the red image that you see here in the perineum in the very lower back. Then guilt, as I said before, is also a huge blockage and why do why do we feel guilty about being abundant and we have the answer to that question at least in my experience what i've seen in 90 percent of the cases of people who come here there is unconscious guilt of being happy because people will say unconsciously it's because how dare i be happy if my ancestors and my parents have such have had such miserable lives. That's one of the major unconscious subconscious belief systems that I see here. Second of all, that we are so bombarded by the media, and this is a more in a conscious level, actually. How dare I be happy if people are suffering, if people are hungry, if people are, you know, living in war zones. So we feel guilty about happiness and abundance. And that's one of the blockages, deep unconscious, subconscious, and conscious guilt. There's also shame. Whenever we feel shameful about anything that we did, the subconscious mind is not aware of time. And in reality, time doesn't even exist. We're going to talk about that tonight in this session too. But whenever we did something that we feel is shameful, we punish ourselves by blocking our abundance. And you need to do some soul searching and digging on that to really uh, release your shame. And one of the best ways to, for me, in my opinion, to release that emotion, that those emotions in general, is the practice of EFT, emotional freedom technique. But right now we're just getting the knowledge to see what are the blockages to abundance. There's also sadness. Sadness blocks our universal abundance. And there's a lot of unconscious sadness and a lot of people, there are two types of people that I see when it comes to sadness. Those who muffle it out and don't want to think about sadness, don't want to go through the sadness and they substitute it for anger, which is pretty common. 
And there is also another type of person who dwells in the sadness and amplifies it and doesn't give it the right proportion and creates blockages to universal abundance because the person lives in sadness, is addicted to sadness. Now, let me tell you something about the emotions we don't want to face. And the most common one that people are semi-aware of and that they kind of consciously run away from is sadness. You know, because it, when you feel sad, you feel vulnerable and it threatens your idea of control. So people will feel sad, don't want to feel sad. One of the images that I like most in this uh, personal development and soul healing field is the image of a fire in the room. So let's say there's a fire in your room and instead of putting it out, you just close the door and go to the kitchen to do something else and you think that the fire is going to take care of itself. If you don't face your emotions, they are going to act like that fire. It's going to take over your room and eventually your whole house is going to burn down. That's why people have symptoms. People, that's why people have diseases. People who don't address their emotions are going to get sick, are going to have financial issues, are going to have collapses because they're not addressing their emotions, okay? So that is a major blockage to universal abundance as well. Lies block abundance. So people who live lies, this is so common. People who hate their marriages but stay married for 40 years. People who hate their jobs but stay in the job for 20 years. People who tolerate toxic people, people who are in toxic relationships, people who wish they were doing something else. The lying to self, especially, is a huge blockage to universal abundance and control because abundance wants to come to you in the easiest ways. And we think that we have to struggle day and night for abundance to happen. I'm not saying we should not make our efforts because we really do. We need to commit, but it doesn't have to be in a suffering process. And when we are controlling things, we are not happy. And when we're not happy and at ease, we cannot attract or allow abundance to flow in our lives. So fear, guilt, and control. So as you can see here, the red chakra, the root chakra, guilt in the sacral chakra and control in the third eye chakra, the indigo, the dark blue here where the third eye chakra is, um, block universal abundance. They seem to be, in my experience, the greatest blockages to universal abundance. As opposed to safety and feeling safe, allowing yourself to feel pleasure and also understanding, okay? So it's very powerful and very important to allow yourself to feel safe, to not focus on imaginary fears, to allow yourself to feel pleasure without any guilt, and to start understanding instead of controlling. Understanding is an ease mode. It's easy. It's grace and ease. It's not about control. The more you start embracing safety, feelings of safety, feelings of pleasure and understanding, the healthier your energy field is going to be and the more you're going to allow universal abundance to flow. Now, structure, creativity and understanding allow flow. Okay? So you do need structure. You don't want to you don't think that abundance and flow are chaotic. They need structure, but it doesn't stay there. Structure allows, allows creativity. And when you create, you're being expansive. You are expanding in life and expansion is universal abundance. And the more you are creative and expand, the more understanding happens and the more flow will happen. So abundance is about allowing and it's about focus. So you allow universal abundance and you focus on it. What is the problem with people usually? The big question is, do you focus on abundance or lack? Even if you live in an environment that could be much better, 
you can still close your eyes and picture and visualize all the abundance that exists in the world and picture yourself there and visualize yourself in this abundance immersed in it and take the steps to go there. So if you're living in lack, if you're living in chaos, you can take inspired action and take the steps to release the lack and connect to abundance because you know there's abundance in the world. And there's a reason why you're not immersed in that abundance. And the reason is because of many blockages and also not just for this reason, but also because of the focus on lack, which we'll talk about more deeply. So if you focus on lack, you need three things. You need, first of all, purification. You need transformation. And you need recreation. Okay? So if you focus on lack, it's because you've got a lot of debris. You've got a lot of residue. You've got a lot of blockages in your unconscious mind, in your deep unconscious, and very likely in your conscious mind too. So the first thing you need to do is purify. The, after you purify, you can create transformation. So you're going to transform whatever the new reality is after purification. And that requires your dedication because you're going to need to recreate your life. And recreating your life just means aligning with abundance, aligning with the already existing and the already waiting for you, universal abundance. So it's very much about your inner work. You need to neutralize so that you can receive. What does that mean? This is about emotional active memories, if we're going to use the technical jargon in energy healing. Let's talk about what are active memories that need to be neutralized and neutral memories or passive memories. Let's say that you go to the supermarket and you buy fruit and you go back home. That's a memory that doesn't have an emotional charge. Let's say that you had a car accident when you were 17 and you still remember the car accident and you're still afraid of bridges because it was near a bridge. And you still quiver at the thought of you know, driving into places you don't really know where there's a bridge and blah, blah, blah. That means that the accident is still emotionally charging you. So you don't want, we cannot erase memories. We cannot erase experiences, but we can neutralize the emotional charge. And that allows us to receive. So one of the greatest blockages to universal abundance are active memories, emotions, active emotions. They don't allow us to receive. They're taking space. They're taking space in our inner world and they're clogging the flow because universal abundance is all about flow. And if there are blockages, the flow can't happen. And the blockages have to do with these emotions that are constantly fueled by thoughts. So what you need to do is declutter. You need to declutter your inner world and your outer world as well, because the outer world is a mirror image of the inner world. So if you live in a cluttered environment, you are not, a, you're not seeing. When you wake up, you open your eyes, you're in clutter. That means your universal abundance is not flowing in your life. I need to ask whoever it is there to mute their mic, please. Thank you. So you need to allow space. You need to declutter the past, not just in your individual experience but also in your past lives and also generational stuff that we carry in ourselves. We do not just inherit biological matter in ourselves. We inherit emotions from our ancestors. So we need to declutter all levels of consciousness in our inner world. And we can also and should also 
declutter the environment around us so that you, you're indicating to the universe, you're indicating to your crown chakra, which is the universe in you. The, uni the whole universe is present in your body on your crown chakra. So when you declutter your external environment, you are indicating to all the cells of your body that decluttering can also happen in inward, in the inner world. For that to happen, you need to face emptiness. And that's where, again, as I said before, we are wired to fear the unknown and to fear the void. So we prefer to live in clutter than to face the emptiness of what it requires for us to bring in a new reality. So if you have a couch from the 70s that's all torn and that's dirty and disgusting, and you want to substitute it for a beautiful 21st century couch, you're not going to buy the 21st century couch and place it on top of the old couch that's dirty and disgusting from the 70s. You're going to get the couch, the ugly, dirty, old couch from the 70s out of your home. It's going to leave an empty space. That's the breathing space that you need. That's the breathing space that your crown chakra needs and all the cells of your body need that indicates to the universe, now I'm ready for abundance to flow. It's not very recommendable to have too many objects. You want to create space in your life and face emptiness because that's what's going to allow abundance to flow through you. It's not about stagnation and keeping too many things. It's about manifesting the flow of life. And that requires breathing space that requires emptiness so that life can flow this is what native americans called the void or great mystery the emptiness the void is what you need to connect to universal abundance the void is where abundance comes from limitless abundance, universal abundance is coming from the void. So if you block the void, if you don't have empty space in your inner world, it's all full of useless, painful emotions. And if your outer world is cluttered as well, you're not going to allow flow. You're blocking your abundance. So there's nothing to be afraid of. If you shift your perspective and resignify, if you consciously choose to leave the fear of the unknown behind and dive into the unknown, trusting that you're diving into universal abundance and great mystery, you will see life responding with the abundance that you want. And this is major in the physical body because it's a crystalline energy in all the cells of your body. So the cells of your body respond to universal abundance. We have a perfect cellular blueprint that is crystalline and geometric. And the more we clutter our inner world, the more we hold on to terrible images, to terrible emotions, to painful experiences. We are distorting the cellular structure in the body. We are damaging the beautiful geometry and the blueprint of our cells. So the more you declutter and release those emotions and those painful energies from your inner world, the healthier your cells are going to be and the more universal abundance is going to happen in your life because perfect healthy cells in the body are an indication of a pure spirit. And spirit creates universal abundance. Spirit is universal abundance, spiritual reality, source energy, God, whatever it is that you want to call the source or the creator of everything there is. So what are the major manifestation blocks? Because abundance is a potential that we are all um, not just allowed to be connected to, but that we're all really um, potentially connected to, right? It's a potential that we can all tap into. However, it manifests in some people's lives and it doesn't manifest in other people's lives. Why is that? 
because there are major manifestation blocks in these people's unconscious and deep unconscious and subconscious and sometimes conscious minds. So there are mental conscious blockages and there are emotional subconscious blockages. The mental blockages are fear, worry, mistrust, and impatience. So if you live in fear, if you worry all the time, this is so powerful. If you look at your day, the 24 hours of your day, take the time to count the minutes and the time you dedicate yourself to worrying. I'm sure it's more time than you dedicate to meditation. It's more time than you dedicate possibly, depending on how happy you are and how well you're feeling, to the time you dedicate for happy thoughts, right? Mistrust, not believing. Listen, if you don't believe that you can manifest universal abundance, that you can tap into universal abundance, you're not going to manifest it because it requires your surrender. It requires your trust. It requires your belief. Impatience. This is also a huge blockage because some people will say, okay, I'm doing all the work. I do all the consciousness. I write down all the, I do the journaling and I do what I should do and nothing happens. Okay. First of all, you don't know the level of blockage. You don't know the size of the blockages. Maybe you think you're dealing with a boulder, but then it's a medieval wall. Or you think there's a pebble in your inner world and there's really a boulder. So we don't really know how much blockage we have to declutter and, and dissolve. But just keep doing the work. And trust that the more you do the work, the more you're creating space for abundance to happen. However, matter, the physicality, the physical reality is slower than spirit. So if you're dealing with generations of damage, of emotional abuse, of emotional distortion, don't think that one three-hour session is going to solve everything. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Usually it doesn't. People do this for years, and the more they declutter, the more they dissolve the blockages, the more abundance they tap into. So life improves. There are higher highs and higher lows. You don't go back to the dark night of the soul. You keep moving forward and dealing with further blockages, but just don't be impatient because the more impatient you are, the more resistance you create consciously. This is really a conscious thing. When it comes to the emotional blockages, they are subconscious. Now, there is conscious and subconscious fear. Sometimes people have no idea they're in fear. Usually when we're lazy about something, we're actually afraid. Laziness is just a disguise for unconscious or subconscious fear. So people who are lazy are actually afraid of change. And they don't go to the gym because they're afraid of changing their bodies and being in a different body reality. And that is going to trigger the reptilian brain. Okay. So the more awareness you have of that, the less vulnerable you are to unconscious fear. There's also unconscious guilt because we tend not to think about that, but it also undermines abundance and unconscious anger. Not everybody is aware of how angry they are in the deep unconscious and subconscious minds. They're oblivious to it. They're blind to it. The fear is shoved under the carpet and it's undermining their reality. Remember I said, I talked about the fire in the room that you close your door and you go to the kitchen and then it suddenly burns down your room and your house, right? That's unconscious anger and also unconscious or subconscious shame. And it really requires us to face our emotions in order for them to heal. So going through the pain is an effort that not everybody's willing to do. And some people will do it halfway. They will build half bridges and then they don't want to go there. When it comes to really dissolving a deep emotional blockage, some people don't want to do the work. And then they complain that their lives are not as abundant as, they, as they, their lives could be. And the reason is they're not willing to go through their emotions. Now, this is a major tipping point in this session that we're having because the, the key to understanding how much abundance you allow in your life is how you tell the story of your life.
Do you tell the story of your life from a victim mode perspective? Or do you tell the story of your life from an empowering perspective? People who do not enjoy a lot of abundance in their lives tend to tell the story of their lives with a focus on scarcity and in a victim mode perspective. So how you tell the story of your life determines your levels of abundance. And we are not very conscious of how, of the quality of our thinking, right? It's so automatic that we are so used to worrying all the time, to being fearful all the time, to being critical all the time, self-criticism, judgment of others. All of that creates blockages in your mind and does not allow abundance to flow. It, you, we tell the story of our lives in our inner dialogue, in our inner monologue, all the time. And pay attention to the quality of the story of your life that you're telling yourself daily, because you may be creating pebbles of blockages every day. And if you're 50 years old and you've been telling the story of your life from a negative or toxic perspective, at least since you were a teenager, how much damage have you created or how many blockages have you created to universal abundance throughout the years? That's a big question. So abundance comes from the focus of your mind and your levels of allowing. The dance between fear and creativity when telling your story is going to be critical here because whenever we tell the story of our lives, we are always going to be in the dance between fear and creativity, especially when we are thinking about the traumas, when we're thinking about the painful experiences, we tend to tell those stories from a fear perspective and we perpetuate the fear, thus creating blockages to universal abundance. When you, on the other end of the spectrum, decide to love yourself, and that's where love comes in. Love is a key to universal abundance because if you love yourself, you're going to tell your story from a creative perspective and not a fearful perspective. How do you tell your story creatively with self-love and then you dissolve the blockages and the abundance starts flowing in? When you look at your painful experiences as they truly are, which are experiences that were there to make you stronger. If you succumb to the temptation of looking at those, at those experiences as, something, as, as things that have made you weaker, you are not going to allow abundance in your life. So the big question is, do you tell your story from a fear perspective or from a creative perspective? Do you create beauty from your pain? Do you create strength from your pain? Do you use your discernment to get out of the quicksand of sorrow and create a beautiful life despite the pain you've been through? Not erasing it, but using it as a building block for your ascension. Not allowing it to become blockage to your abundance, but releasing the emotional charge and allowing life to flow. To be more specific, what I'm saying to you, do you focus on abundance or do you focus on lack on a daily basis? I'm not talking about the time you're meditating possibly once a week, if you're a daily meditator, that it's for sure something that's allowing more abundance in your life. But I'm talking about the inner chatter of your daily life. When you're washing the dishes, when you're driving your car, do you focus on abundance or do you focus on lack? Your entire life is spirit-based. That's the whole point. If you understand that everything you think becomes and already is a reality, it's going to eventually manifest because you are polluting the spiritual level with toxic thinking. However, on the other end of the spectrum, if you understand that your entire life is spirit-based and you start fueling your life with beautiful thoughts, 
with powerful visualizations, if you focus on the beauty and the abundance, you're going to start creating more abundance in your life. So there are two things that you need to do to create universal abundance. And both are based on love for self. Number one, focus on the abundance and not on the lack. Number two, do not ignore the pain. Go through the pain one by one, bit by bit. And there are many modalities that can allow you to do that. You can do a lot of do-it-yourself practices and you can search for experts that will give you energy healing and emotional healing. So when I talk, about, this is important. This is very important. When I talk about spirit-based reality, I'm not talking about a mystical escapism, okay? So I'm not saying that you just visualize the beautiful energies of life and you start dressing yourself like a fairy and pretending that everything is okay because that's childish. Spirit-based just means that everything that's physical is also and was once potential and that we are creators of life. And that if everything is spirit-based, your memory is a spiritual reality that can be discharged from any painful vibrations. Is this making sense? It's very important that it makes sense for you. And a spirit-based reality doesn't mean it's the opposite of matter either. Matter is infused with spirit. Matter is just a dense manifestation of spirit. It's, it is spirit in a slower vibration, but it isn't separate from spirit. Spirit-based means consciousness infused. So if you look at your life and you wish you had more abundance in one or more areas, you start looking at those areas of life with a consciousness-infused perspective, meaning what is creating this? What is creating the terrible boss? What is creating the toxic romantic relationship? What is creating the lack of money? What is creating the terrible place where I live? What is creating the toxic environment where I work? It is a spirit-based reality. You can be either aware of it or not. So giving purpose to matter in every second starts to change your life immediately. You start looking at it as an expectator and you start looking at it as a creator. And when you give purpose to it, you stop being a victim. Even if you're going through a terrible experience, if you're going through the dark night of the soul, if you understand that that reality is spirit-based, you are giving purpose to that manifestation. And everything that matter places in your life is a symbol, is a language of consciousness, is a symbol of spirit. It's spirit talking to you. So it's a silent understanding of the meaning of life. This is what is most important. You start creating abundance in your life and you start tapping into mature love. That is the reason why A Course in Human Nature has a whole section a first part of wisdom so that in this wisdom you can develop mature love, adult love for self. This adult love for self, for self allows you to understand the meaning of life and you start creating the circumstances, the inner world that is compatible and that allows the abundance of life, the universal flow. So spirit and consciousness are limit, limitless. So there is no limit to spirit and consciousness. There's always something new to learn. There's always expansion to happen. There is no such thing as I've reached uh, the, the, the top. There is no such thing as the top in any area of life, okay? And for most of us, some areas of life are still very minor. They still need a lot of work on it, correct? But if spirit and consciousness are limitless and matter is spirit manifested in a denser reality, that means that matter can manifest 
limitless spiritual life. If you look at your ancestors way back in paleo times and you look at us in the 21st century, hasn't matter manifested spirit in expansion and limitlessness? It has. The same thing that has happened to the history of humanity can happen to you in your life. You can change your material reality. You can change your physical reality. You can change whatever is manifesting in your life once you tap into spirit and consciousness. And this limitlessness is called abundance. So you can be, do, and have anything you want, as Abraham Hicks will say. Now, this doesn't mean you're only going to focus on what you can be, do, and have with the optimistic aspect of it because as i said if you only do that and don't face your pain and declutter you are going to be in avoidance mode it's going to be escapism as i said but you cannot live and dwell in the pain either okay so the people who are not manifesting the abundance of life that they want to manifest are in some level conscious or subconscious or deep unconsciously dwelling and living in the pain the pain is creating the reality of their lives and not allowing abundance to flow so what happens when your life is not what you want what's going on you want something consciously but your reality is different There are a few answers to that. Problem number one is short circuit between levels of consciousness and aspects of the psyche. Okay, so we talk about levels of consciousness in session 11 and session 12 in our uh, course in the first part. And aspects of the psyche is session seven. So you may want to go back to that. So what can be happening, one of the answers to not being able to manifest what what you want in your life is that your higher self wants something and your inner child doesn't. Your wounded inner child or your controlling ego are stronger than your higher self in this moment in your life, in the present moment of the here and now. Another thing is we have three levels of consciousness and the more we develop ourselves, we tap into the super conscious mind, which uh, connects to the conscious mind, which is the third level of consciousness, which we'll talk about soon. So if your conscious mind wants the abundance, but the subconscious mind is programmed for scarcity, the subconscious is going to be stronger than your conscious mind. Unless, unless you start tapping into the super conscious mind of universal abundance of the crown chakra then you start balancing the energies because if the conscious mind which is the tip of your iceberg let's say it's 10 percent of your consciousness reality and the subconscious and deep unconscious minds are 90 they are going to win so if the unconscious and subconscious minds minds are programmed for scarcity and only the, the conscious mind wants the abundance 10 percent cannot fight 90 percent correct if the conscious mind, however, starts developing and connecting to the superconscious in the crown chakra, then you have a more balanced reality because the superconscious is limitlessness, complete, absolute infinity. Then you're going to start changing your world. So the levels of consciousness may be in conflict. And then you need to do something about it and address the blockages in the, in the deep unconscious and the subconscious mind. If you want to go back to that in session 11 and 12 in our course, I highly recommend it because you're going to see that with different eyes. And the deep unconscious level may be full of boulders, maybe full of medieval walls that block the flow of abundance. What is the deep unconscious level? your family ancestry and all the belief systems of your ancestors and their painful experiences. We have a lot of family loyalty in the deep unconscious mind. That's why we have constellations, cardinal method constellations every month here at Renova 
to give people the opportunity to declutter and dissolve the blockages of the deep unconscious mind. The subconscious level is your individual experience as a child until you were seven. A lot of programs, a lot of belief systems may have been ingrained in your mind. You may have absorbed a lot of clutter, a lot of distortions, a lot of problems that are blocking your universal abundance. So you need to also dissolve the subconscious level blockages. The conscious level brings awareness and really is your key to deliberate action in changing your reality. And the conscious level allows the superconscious to step in. So the superconscious level is limitlessness. It is abundance. It's universal abundance. It's infinity. And that infinity can manifest itself in your individual experience if the sub superconscious level is, starts to be activated and nurtured by your daily meditation practices, by your daily EFT practices, by your journaling, by your focus on what you want and not on what you don't want, by your monitoring your thoughts and not allowing them to be toxic, and all these daily practices will start creating and building a new reality that is blockage free and that allows abundance to flow creating the void creating empty space for abundance to bring in the new realities the second problem to why we don't manifest what we want in our lives is external interference so that's a big one. And I don't want to encourage people to be in victim mode here because we create our reality. So if there are toxic people in your life that have a toxic focus, maybe it's not the conscious mind that is toxic, but they have toxic subconscious and deep unconscious minds that will affect you if they're directly connected to you in your environment. So toxic people and toxic environments may be blocking your abundance, may be creating the boulders in your inner world because everything is spirit-based and other people's energies can interfere in your field. But if you're attracting that kind of external interference, it's because there is a resonance in your inner world, okay? Because we create our realities. And the thing is here, if there are toxic people, toxic things, and toxic environments that you're in contact with, it's your job from now on. And this is an act of self-love. This is, again, love coming into the picture. Love being the basic fuel and the key to start allowing universal abundance in your life. Awareness of of other people's levels of consciousness. You cannot turn the blind eye to people's toxicity or to people's light. I'm not encouraging you to judge other people. I'm encouraging you to be very aware of what you want in your life and be very aware that if someone in your life, even if it's someone you love, has a toxic focus, you must be at least aware of it Start creating um, not just the awareness, but the healthy boundaries to that person's energy so that you can start dissolving the blockages in your inner world. Let me know if this made sense for you. You can ask all the questions you want, and this is very important. So abundance is very much about awareness, okay? You need to open your eyes and see the truth. If you don't see the truth, you're not going to see the blockages <laughs> because the truth will show you where the blockages are. And if, if it's a terrible boss, you love your salary, but you hate your boss. What's more important? Your quality of life? Can you find other possibilities of having a better salary even and not the terrible boss in the package? If you have a sinister husband or wife, a spouse, that drains you, that is destructive for you, are you going to turn a blind eye and be unhappy? That's the question. Okay, so universal abundance is waiting for you as long as you see the truth and make the decisions to release blockages to abundance.
regarding your inner world and regarding the external world. So it's about letting go of limitations because we attract these terrible experiences because there's a wound inside. So then we go back to love for self. We go back to the emotional realm. If you have painful experiences that you don't want to go through because they're just too hurtful and you don't think you have the emotional strength, it's the fire in your room that is going to burn down the whole house. And you just closed the door and went to the kitchen thinking it's going to take care of itself. Okay? So letting go of your inner limitations is going to create a very different external reality. It's also not just about letting go of limitations, but it's also about allowing. How much self-permission do you give yourself to be happy? Allowing has to do with self-love. If you love yourself, stop eating garbage food. If you love yourself, take a shower every day. If you love yourself, take an emotional shower every day called meditation or EFT and journaling. If you love yourself, clean your home. If you love yourself, clean your car. This is about allowing, and it has to do with your inspired action. So the key to allowing is self-love. There is, it's simple. I'm not saying it's easy for some people who have a lot of emotional damage, but it is simple. It has to do with start loving yourself more. The more you love yourself, the more you dissolve blockages to universal abundance. There's no rush for this, but there is moving forward. And it drives me insane when people say, I'll do it in divine timing. Wait a second. Divine timing is after you've done your work, you wait for the results. If the results are taking too long, don't get impatient because you did a lot of decluttering. And sometimes it takes a while for things to manifest in the physical world, or maybe you still have more work to do. And don't complain about it because it's accumulated energy from ancestors. It's past life stuff, and you just are willing to deal with it. Do not use divine timing as an excuse for procrastination and stagnation because that is just a disguise for fear of change. Okay, there is no rush. You don't want to be impatient about the results because that's your controlling ego in charge. But you need to move forward every day. Do you have three meals a day? Possibly, yes. Do you take a shower every day? Very likely. Do you go to sleep daily or every night? Yes. Start including self-love in your routine and you're going to see the shifts happening. You're going to see the blockages dissolving. You're going to see yourself allowing universal abundance that has always been available for you. So divine timing for abundance is in the here and now. You have six steps to take by yourself. Do you remember the chakras? The survival in the root, the pleasure in the, the survival and safety in the root, the pleasure in the sacral, the confidence in the solar plexus, the love for self in the heart, the truth in the throat, and the positive aligned thoughts in the third eye, the insights. And then you surrender to the crown chakra and create space for the crown chakra to shower you with universal abundance. Time does not exist. All realities exist at the same, at the same time. In parallel, your ancestor seven generations ago exists. You are here alive right now. The linear understanding of time is just for 3d it's just for the physical reality but if you go to a cardinal method constellation you're going to see a very vivid energy of a seventh generation ancestor that is still uh, acting on a person's life maybe as the boulder maybe as the blockage to universal abundance and once you are aware of it and see it you declutter your inner world you declutter your deep unconscious mind. So focus on universal abundance and take the steps to allow it in your life. 
trust that the more you do this work, the more you dissolve the blockages, the more universal abundance is going to flow into your life. Allow it. It's so important that you allow it. Some people don't give themselves permission. Why? Because they don't love themselves enough. That's the only reason. It's lack of self-love. So let go of those limitations. Let go of the past. Let go of the fear and start connecting to real abundance in your life. Meditate. Meditation is pure connection to universal abundance. It's pure surrendering to the crown chakra. It's creating peace in your life deliberately. It's diving within and releasing those blockages. Speak truth. This is a major pivoting, life-changing practice, even with the smallest things. People tend to justify what they call little white lies so I don't hurt people. That upsets your throat chakra, and that creates blockages for universal abundance. The universe doesn't like lies, okay? So if you don't want to hurt someone who's asked you to the movies and you don't feel like going, you don't have to lie and say, oh, I'm sorry, I had another appointment, I had another, I, I don't know, I had a meeting or something. Don't lie. It may seem innocent, but it's not, okay? You're telling the universe that you are allowing lies. So you don't have to justify and give too much information about yourself. Just respect your privacy, but just tell the person, I apologize, I can't. But don't make a stupid excuse because it upsets the, the throat chakra. And heal all wounded and broken relationships. This is so, so, so important. Heal the wounded and broken relationships. You don't have to call the people who hurt you. Maybe the person has passed away. You do the healing in your inner world. You face the little fire in your room and you extinguish it instead of allowing it to consume your room and your home. Okay? So make a list of all your wounded or broken relationships and start addressing them with a serious love for self, because forgiveness is a major act of self-love. Resentment is going to eat your insides. It's going to deform your cells. It doesn't hurt the other person. It hurts you. So let go of resentment and heal your wounded and broken relationships. Universal abundance is about making peace with others and making peace with self. Any inner conflict. And I will tell you, one of the best ways to do this, in my opinion, is daily EFT. I practice this and I'm going to teach the people in the course the way that I practice and do it. And I really suggest you do that daily. And you are going to see that you will be doing your job to address your emotional pain, thus dissolving your blockages to universal abundance. Conflict keeps you from seeing the beauty of your true potential. Conflict is a huge medieval brick wall or boulder wall in your life. So universal abundance has everything to do with honoring who you are, being very aware of your identity. We do talk about this in session 11 of our course too. And honoring why you're here, it's not just about knowing who you are, that's the first step. That's the whole reason why we have Know Thyself exercises in this course. But it's also about honoring why you are here, being aware of your mission. Some people have the seaweed syndrome, as I call it. They're just floating around in the ocean of life, not knowing where they are going to go, not focused, you know, no direction. Honoring why you are here means knowing your mission and pursuing it. The more you connect to your true identity and the more you honor why you're here, your mission, the more you connect to universal abundance. It's like a light shining in the darkness. It just dissolves all blockages. Your true identity and your mission dissolve blockages. It's the super conscious mind overpowering the deep unconscious and the subconscious. 
So abundance equals how you can assist the world. That's the whole reason we're here. No one is here with a pointless existence, okay? So if you block the reason why you're here, you can't assist the world. You don't live in abundance. Because once you tap into universal abundance, all you want to do is connect to others, help others heal, help others grow, help others be happy, be in be a part of humanity and be a beacon of light to the world. That's the real manifestation of universal abundance in a person's life. So make peace with yourself. That's the first step. Your questions will be answered. You can be absolutely sure of this. Your sacred path will become clear if you do this. Always. Release your grudges. You're going to be the happiest person on the planet. I guarantee you. Most of people's unhappiness has one name, grudges slash resentments. So if you release that, you're going to be happy and you're going to be abundant. Release duality because matter and spirit are one and the same. Abundance is all about integration. It's the opposite of separation. It is the opposite of fragmentation. So the more you release duality and see all as one, everything in the external world is a mirror image of who you are. Everything in the external world is a mirror image of your inner world. Then you're going to start getting what universal abundance is and the role of love in the whole story because love is integration. It's the ability of the heart to remain open, serene, and unafraid. Universal abundance is when you're happy, healthy, and abundant, right? Everybody talks about happy, healthy, and abundance so much. It's about ease. I'm not saying that you're not going to make your efforts to release the blockages, but it's not about suffering. It's about grace and wisdom. It's about peace, love, and empowerment. Empowerment meaning confidence and self-esteem and the ability to create and manifest. It's not the sickly kind of authoritarian power over other people. That's a distorted idea of power. We're talking about empowerment as being this confident, beautiful being that you were born to be in the world. Practice. How do you do this? So I'm going to teach you now how you do that. You feel the pulsation of Gaia. You connect to the earth. Step uh, with bare feet on the land. Lie down on the grass or the sand. Feel the rhythms of the earth with your body. Allow your body to connect to the body of Gaia, of the planet. Love for self is not going to allow thoughts of fear, worry, and frustration anymore. The more you connect to the earth, the more you're going to feel the love of earth for you. It's going to infuse the cells of your body with love, and it's going to start overthrowing thoughts of fear, worry, and frustration. Do your inner work, journal, write down your emotions, do EFT and meditate. Deliberately pivot from toxic thinking, create a ritual to address your emotions, and don't allow worrying and undermining thoughts in your life. And take the time to address them daily, and then don't allow painful thoughts and terrible emotions to enter your thoughts in any other time. Love for self is all about high quality thoughts. People who love themselves have high quality thoughts. So there's an affirmation that I will recommend to you. You can say, I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. So be it. It is done. It is done. It is done. So this is an affirmation from a book called A Happy Pocket Full of Money. And it's not about money. It's about abundance in all areas of life, okay? So what people do to manifest money, you can do to manifest your beautiful self. It's not just about money. It's about everything in life. And when you say, 
it is done, it is done, it is done. You're hypnotizing your, sub your subconscious mind. So universal abundance is available to all who are ready for it. It's always been available. The reason why some people tap into it and some do not is that the ones who do not have blockages, and we have addressed what the blockages are, so now you know what they are and how to dissolve them. So it's Q&A time, and let's chat about this. Let's hear from you. I want to welcome the, the new people in the course. So this is starting the love part, right? So we're going in the upward spiral and connecting to love after we've been in the wisdom part. So you can, thanks, buddy. I'm so I'm so happy. Thank you. So we can really revisit some of the prior content. But what I want to tell you guys to do is to, as I said, this is the knowledge part. And then we have the know thyself exercises, which are knowledge of self. Okay. So this is general knowledge. And the know thyself exercises are the, the second third. It's, a, it's three thirds, right? It's sectioned into three, three levels of self-understanding every month. So this course in human nature, each session is like a cardinal method session, as I said. Once you do the know thyself exercises, you are really doing the second third, which is knowing who you are. And the third part is self-transformation. It's taking action, inspired action, not automatic action, to start changing your life, okay? So we are going to make the knowledge part of this course. This is all about love and expansion. There is a reason why the first session in this part of the course is about universal abundance, because we're going to publish this all every time we have a session, we're going to publish it on YouTube on the next day and leave it over the weekend for the people who don't know our course to know what we're doing. And then on Monday, we get it out of YouTube and only the people who are in the course have access to the whole library of all the recordings and all the Know Thyself exercises and the Facebook community where I am weekly uh, talking to you guys. And... And then we're going to be able to grow our, our community of people who want the knowledge, the knowledge of self and the self-transformation. Because the more aware people are in our life, in their lives, the better the world is, right? The humanity changes when the human heart changes. So we want to touch as many human hearts as possible with the knowledge part. So it's going to be in the Paula Renova YouTube channel only between Thursday and Monday so that you can tell people who are interested in this kind of work and in working on themselves, making the world better to engage in it. It is a soul healing and consciousness expansion program that we want a lot of people to be able to know what it's about and understand it and change themselves and grow our community which is already so beautiful and so awesome and the changes that i see in people is so remarkable the ones who really do the work are changing their lives in such amazing ways i will tell you the know thyself exercises are pure alchemy they're going to create such huge changes in your inner world it's going to be incredible Okay, so let me ask you guys, do you have any questions? Was it clear? Do you have anything that didn't make much sense for you? We did revisit some of the contents of the prior classes, right? But this specific class, are you guys thoughtful? Are your hearts beating faster? How are you feeling? I'm sure everybody can improve in their levels of abundance and self-realization, right? But how are you feeling now? Why don't you guys chat in the boxes? How are, you, how are you feeling with the class? How is it resonating? How are you digesting it? Kristen, I love this. Alexandra, amazing. I love you guys are so, so connected. I feel the love. My heart is expanded. I think it's interesting that early Monday morning, I had a dream where I was riding in the back of a station wagon. Okay. 
I'm not even going to finish reading. I just need to tell you something. Cardinal Method Energy and the Course in Human Nature is the intellectual branch of the Cardinal Method. It is very connected to dreams. Dreams are languages of consciousness and they are alchemy too. Okay, so when you have that kind of dream that I'm sure that Kristen is going to describe here, you can be absolutely sure that your inner world is already shifting. Facing backward, okay. You were in the back of a station wagon facing backward and I turned and looked at the driver's seat and the car was driving itself and there was nothing I could do but hang on and allow the car to drive and hope it worked out. Then in the next segment of the dream, I climbed over the seats and got into the driver's seat and drove and drove. But then the car was being squeezed between a huge dump truck and a fence and everything was muddy. And again, all I could do was hold on to the wheel and keep going and asking the angels for help to squeeze through. All right. I'm going to tell you about dream symbols, okay, Kristen? First of all, whenever you anybody dreams of a car, a car is the symbol of your life. So when you say in the beginning, you were facing backward and turned and looked at the driver's seat, was dri- the car was driving itself, that means... You are not, in, you were not in the driver's seat in your life. You were not the one driving your life. You're not the driving force of your life. That's your super conscious mind. That's your higher self giving you a very vivid clue of the present moment reality. Okay. I'm glad that you remember all this and that it's registered. And the car was driving itself and there was nothing I could do but hang on and allow the car to drive and hope it worked. So, Again, that is the that is what we we feel when we feel we're not in control of our lives, right? We pray that a higher power will protect us. The next segment, I climbed over the seats and got into the driver's seat. Okay, that's a huge improvement. You got in the driver's seat of the car and drove, but then the car was being squeezed between a huge dump truck and a fence. So your life, your car is between and it was all muddy and again all i could do was hold on to the wheel and keep going and ask the angels to help and squeeze through so what's life telling you it's a language of consciousness that where you are right now you're feeling squeezed between two options that are not the flow squeezed between two blockages So I am going to teach you guys throughout the month. Remember that every week I I go, I tell you, I I get a video online and teach you something and talk about something and tell you to, to think of something. So this month before the next session, I'm going to teach you the way I believe is a great way for EFT practicing. Okay. The way that I do it. And I'm going to, on the next week, teach you how to interpret dreams because it's a technique and I'm going to teach you guys because Kristen brought this up and you guys build the course with me. Okay. I have a roadmap kind of, and I'm kind of a guide, but you guys are in the forest with me. You see trails and we include that. So I'm going to give you um, a step-by-step way to do EFT, which you should do daily and a roadmap to dream interpretation, which I have been doing since I was 26 years old. So that's 15 years. And it is phenomenal. It is awesome. And the Cardinal Method is so, so connected to dreams. So I'm going to do that, okay? I took it to I took it to mean that I need to surrender. Kristen, yes, okay. It has to do with surrender but it also has to do with you being crushed between two options that are not flow. All right. But it's more complex than that. And I'm going to teach you how to interpret your own dreams with the technique throughout the month. I'm going to be releasing it. So on Wednesday, next Wednesday, it's EFT and the other Wednesday, I'm going to teach you the dream technique. All right. Claudia, I feel much more confident. Marcus and I feel good. Your message seems to have gone through. Thank you. I'm so glad. This is amazing. Thank you. I'm glad that it has gone through and we're in some level, the most important thing really in a nutshell of this specific uh, universal abundance, a key 
is to stop allowing toxic thinking in your daily life. Don't criticize yourself. Don't criticize other, others. Pivot your thoughts to what you want instead of what you don't want. And create time in your day to address your emotions. But if you have to do only one thing in a nutshell of all of that was said tonight, monitor your thoughts and observe how much time in your day do you spend criticizing others in your mind, criticizing yourself in your mind, worrying about other people, worrying about self, because that's creating blockages to your abundance. Awesome. Thank you. Great, Kristen. It is, see? We're building the course together, this phase. The love part, it's so incredible. The love part is just so different. It's much more inclusive because wisdom is not for everybody, right? But love is. And what I like about this is that new people are coming in the love part and they have access to all the wisdom sessions now and they can go for it too. So we're going to open the class for a few days on YouTube. It's going to be a free class for a few days for people to know. And we are going to build the course together with the questions that you ask and the experiences that you share. And also, in the Know Thyself exercises, we always have references of books. So we had 12 sessions in the wisdom part. There are five books in each session, right? So about 60 books to read or listen in audiobooks. But this time, we're going to have books and movies. So it's going to be so, so powerful. I can't wait for that. All right. Any further questions? How are you guys? So you guys are feeling good. This is great. If you have any further questions or experiences to share, Susan, your message was invigorating and I went from sadness to uplifted. Great tools. Thank you. I'm so glad, Susan. Your journey is so beautiful. And honestly, this is life, right? We are going to be like water going around the rocks, but it's not to say we're not going to have problems and challenges. It's how we master them and how we deal with them. And it's about facing the whole reality. It's not about duality. I only want the good. I want to forget about the bad. It's about integrating and the bad or painful experiences becoming strength. That's the whole reason why we go through pain. Everything can become strength depending on where, on where you place it. If you place that energy in front of you, it's going to be blockage to abundance. If you place it behind you, it becomes a very powerful force that pushes you forward in the flow of life. So going from sadness to upliftment to uplifted is a huge thing. I told you guys, every time we have a monthly session, it's like having a Cardinal Method session. And the people who have had Cardinal Method sessions know how it really is powerful and it goes into all levels of consciousness and connects us to life, the cardinal method of life connection, and brings joy. So I'm so glad to hear it. Thank you all so much. I love you deeply. And we're in the love part of the course, which is so delicious. I want to hug you all. You're all being hugged in my heart. And I will see you guys next week in our Facebook community and the other week too with the, the techniques that I'm going to teach you and always whenever you want in the Facebook community and in our website. All right. Love you. Take good care of yourselves. Be happy and joyful. Dissolve the boulders, dissolve the blockages, allow abundance in your lives. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.